Are you ready to pray? We're going to take a few minutes and please give your destiny an undivided attention as you pray. Do not allow the devil distract you. Forget about whatever bills, whatever issues and let us join in prayer. The fervent, effectual prayer. There is such a description to prayer as fervent and effectual of the righteous man availed much. Are you ready to pray? Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Whatever position you find comfortable, just make sure you pray. Just make sure you pray. Shalima Rasko Branda Katapratike de Belekatosia. Shapakato Sata Brandeke de Balakosia Tabalandasia. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Mante Kaparatas Katebreteke Lekatosia Tabahashia. Zapras kate ras kada balanta barantes kade baliata. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Balanta salakata pres kati lakaparuyasi. Pray, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and defieth himself, and defieth himself. Shana makata paratas kata brenda ke paratoshi ata. Ebrakosh kati la parianda preske di balasi ata bakatosh. Shima nekete baria katosh. Laka te branda skate laka praska di barakoshia kate brandi. Shadi balaka ta banda prata kaskote balaka tosh. Imbraka tus kati rasha balaka ta. Leke pros, leke te brandos koto brate koshi ge de bele gena. Shibenia shabarata kata branda kata balaka tosia. Imbreke te parus kati laka parus ya te ge de bele gena tosia. Shana mele kata brandos kata branda kata paro kata shakete. Imbraka tos koto brandos kote leke te branda kata balaka tosia. Shemanda kata prosko to balika prada da kapalia da balagatos. Shade baka paratos kadi bande prada gade balagatos. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen carefully, please. We are praying now. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus was teaching and he made a very profound statement. He called Satan the thief. He says, The thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Are we together? So he reveals to us that Satan can steal, Satan can kill, and Satan can destroy. Now let me connect it to a mystery and then we'll pray. In Matthew chapter 21, please, give us verse 13. Matthew 21 and verse 13. This was when Jesus came into the temple. When he came into the temple, the Bible says he met people doing business within the temple is that true they were exchanging in the temple and he was angry and the bible says he began to whip them there were a few people they called money changers their job was to exchange you would bring something and they would exchange all that was happening in the temple so when jesus came he took
threw everything down and he made a statement that will be our prayer point now he said my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves listen carefully do you know what he's saying he's saying at every point his house is one of two things either a house of prayer or a place where thieves are carrying out exchanges and that house is you you that temple of the holy ghost he said at every point in your life you are either a house of prayer or there are exchanges going through in your life my house shall be called a house a temple of prayer failure to be a temple of prayer it was lack of prayer in the temple that gave access for exchangers exchangers of destiny exchangers of all kinds of things is someone ready to pray i'd like you to pray and find that house back to a place of prayer my house this temple is a house of prayer that means the ministry of the thief should not find expression in my house the ministry of sickness and infirmity should not find expression in me because this house is a house of prayer pray pray let it be from the depth of your heart my house shall be called a house of prayer satan you have no authority to steal from this house to kill from this house to destroy this house because it is a house of prayer hallelujah hallelujah listen i want you to believe in this prayer that you are praying you are not wasting your time something is happening to you acts chapter 28 acts chapter 28 in jesus name now please listen let me establish another prayer point in acts chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 and down to 6 the bible says when paul had escaped the storm remember an angel appeared to him and he told them there shall be no loss and the bible says they went safely and arrived at an island called melita now verse 2 28 verse 2 the bible says when the locals he calls them the barbarians the people showed them kindness watch this now paul was about to reveal something that the people did not have the discernment to see the bible says there was a viper hiding in the wood a viper a venomous snake that could it it could it could bite you and even kill you how did it hide that those who brought down the wood did not see it and they put everything together and while they sat down there as soon as the wood was on fire the viper that was hiding there suddenly became exposed if fire was not there the viper will still hide in the wood and you will not know that you are living with an enemy but as soon as fire was lit the fire exposed the viper listen can i tell you i know this about the prayer ministry there are things that you may never understand occurrences and happenings of demon spirit it takes generating energy in the spirit and suddenly you will begin to see that the things you could not understand are now making sense what, what, why, why am I receiving all these assaults from the place of work what is this when my promotion is coming in the place of prayer 
fire can expose the viper fire can expose the viper lift your voice and pray pray with this understanding that everything that attempts to impede the purposes of God in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost the fire that comes in this prayer Shadika Paratos got to Paratas Yada Shabra Katos Katila Kaparianda Katos Yata. The fire exposed the viper, the fire exposed the cause of your pain, the fire exposed the cause of the delays, the fire exposed the cause of the disfavor, the fire exposed the cause of the antagonisms. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Shabra Katos Koto Pretekata. Lekata Braskate Shakata Berekotos. Imbrekatos. Eka Shekate Beretos Kenyata Kasa. of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus is God helping us Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43 Jesus taught us a very deep mystery Jesus was teaching on the activity of spirits and he said when an unclean spirit listen carefully is gone out of a man that it walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none next verse the bible says then it will say i will return to what the man is free but as far as the spirit is concerned it is his house and he says i will return to my house from whence i came out and when he is come he will find it empty he will find it swept he will find it garnished last verse the bible says he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they will enter in and dwell there and the last state of the man is worse than let me explain something to you listen it takes a man anointed by God with spiritual understanding to cast out a demon out of another do we agree on that and then the Bible tells us something serious that that spirit goes to the desert and when it goes to the desert where there is no man to cast it by itself there is a condition in the desert that makes that spirit uncomfortable and it will prefer to come back and fight with that man a desert is a place of extreme heat and that when that spirit goes to that place in the presence of that extreme heat the spirit by itself with no one to cast it becomes uncomfortable that means when your body becomes like that desert when your life becomes like that desert that the spirit becomes uncomfortable because the desert is a place of heat the bible says he maketh his ministers his angels can i tell you this listen you don't know how cheap satan is until you pray satan is as powerful as your prayerlessness makes him become that a spirit in a human body will require a man anointed by the holy ghost to get it out but it goes to a desert where there's no preacher no keyboard 
no drums no choir no protocol the heat in the desert will cast it back and it will come to stay in someone else that means when you become in the similitude of the heat of that desert your life and everything around you becomes a no-go zone for any operation of demon spirits is someone ready to pray you are praying with this understanding that i am praying to become in experience a flame of fire lift your voice and pray a flame of fire 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 Don't be tired. Make sure you're praying. Hey, Pratos Koto Prakete Pratos Kate Prende Katele Kotisia. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Very powerful scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Is it projected? Can you see it? Can we read it together? One, two, read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hold on. Wherefore, your favor would have arrived since. Wherefore, your lifting. Wherefore, your destiny helper would have arrived he said i tried once and again but satan listen i understand this scripture very very well let me tell you a story and then we'll pray sir i don't know how many years now i was praying one night true story and then my my ceiling suddenly disappeared in that vision and then i'm seeing this creature and it is looking at me having eyes that are as big as a human head i'm not exaggerating it looked like a dinosaur and it was looking at me red eyes and then it had a tail the tail had its own life you could detach it and it would still be alive and he was looking at me with fierce anger and he made a statement he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was a statement but satan hindered us you will you will be amazed to know how many things would have been easy for you But Satan hindered us now listen let me tell you this even though it happened with Jesus I want to explain something to you hmm. the centurion in one of the synoptic accounts pleaded with Jesus to come and rescue their child from dying remember that story while Jesus was on his way going another woman interrupted him and said please I have an issue of blood and he focused and was dealing with her issue by the time he was done in one of the synoptic accounts they said this other person had died timing matters in destiny hear me it was the delay of the bridegroom that made the five other virgins if the bridegroom came early all the ten they were all virgins the delay of the bridegroom 
made the oil of the five they all started well but the bridegroom was late I want you to pray with understanding that every hindrance I desire to come to you once and again only God knows how many things in Abuja have been authorized by prophecy to come to you they have tried they tried in 2019 they tried in 2020 lift your voice and pray with understanding I clear away every hindrance by the blood of the Lamb Paros Kates Kote Mashata. Open doors that should have come. Lift things that should have come. Answers to prayer that should have come. Alike Parus Kate Brenta Katoska Diadamos. Ebrekete kotos koto prete katele katos shame skonde prendi katos kiata. Shade prendi gedi bash. Sede breketo braskoto Maria tabarando shale. E breketo skoto prato skoto prende ketepa. E brakato sombro sosi ketelekot. Makata prende ke perusiata. E kreto skoto shoto prende ketepa retos. soon round up you will marvel and wonder the results you will get from this prayer believe me now listen once upon a time in Bible days there was a criminal called Barabbas listen carefully many of you will be surprised the reason and the explanation for disfavor around your life there was a criminal called Barabbas who had been troubling the people and they apprehended him and, and kept him and then one time when they caught Jesus also listen to me Pontius Pilate brought Jesus to stand and brought Barabbas to stand and they asked the people who do you want to be crucified and who should be released there was a spirit that came upon the people and they looked at Jesus and said this is the one to crucify and release the criminal how do you in your right mind release a criminal so don't be surprised that there can be four people in the office who are supposed to be promoted and in spite of your capacity that there is an orchestration of darkness where good can be called evil and evil can be called good he said do not allow your good to be evil spoken of that means if you keep quiet and you don't pray you can be doing good but a perception can come on your good and it will be seen as evil are you ready to pray open your mouth and decree and declare my good will be rewarded as good my good will never be evil spoken of Barabbas should never be released a criminal in the stead of a righteous man please pray
not let your good be evil spoken of. Do not let your good be evil spoken of. Oh man of God, oh businessman, oh career person, contend in prayer. Do not allow your good to be misrepresented. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me show you a mystery. In Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1, the Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Help me finish that scripture. And the Lord had blessed him in how many things? So God is able to grant rest round about. Now please come with me to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts 16. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. Acts 16 from verse 25. Now, when you begin to read contextually, you will see that Paul casted a demon out of a lady who brought gain for her masters by divination. Is that true? On account of that miracle, it boomeranged on them and they, they now took them and kept them in prison. But there's something I want to show now. A prison is a place of confinement. It's a place of limitation. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. 26. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Hallelujah. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Please read the next sentence, everyone. And immediately, all doors. How many doors? How many doors? Immediately, once there was an earthquake, all doors, financial doors, opened. All doors opened. A God can give a man rest round about. He says, All doors open. All doors open. Listen. When you read 2 Kings chapter 5, we'll not turn there for sake of time. The Bible says, Naaman, there was a man called Naaman. He was the captain of the Syrian army, he says. He said he was a valiant man in war, but he was leprous. Thank God for the areas you have gotten results, but for the sake of one other area, you must insist in prayer that in this year, all doors open. Lift your voice and pray. All doors, all doors, all doors, all doors. Kabaroshka de pekatos, embra katosh koto prente kote sekete. All doors. In the marvelous name of Jesus, all doors, all doors, open. All doors, doors of favor, open. All doors, doors of speed, open. open doors of fruitfulness open hallelujah 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 we're wrapping up please do not forget what I want to share with you now please look up let me establish probably the last prayer point or so 
the gospel the gospel that we that we preach has two sides to it there is the message that saves that is the first dimension of the gospel the message that saves and the key to propagating that message is evangelism are we together but there is the second dimension to it the ideology that transforms society so there are two sides to the gospel there is the message that saves there is the ideology that transforms society the key to advancing the message is called evangelism but the key to advancing the ideology is called influence I'm establishing my prayer request now my prayer point so for you to completely preach the gospel you need to embrace the message that saves that deals with you personal salvation but territorial salvation is the mindset that is introduced into systems and structures that enthrones Christ are we together now if you focus only on the message that saves you will be saved as an individual but your territory will frustrate your Christian experience an example was Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah Lot was a righteous man as a person but he was among a people who were depraved and he could not find expression so there are two keys to kingdom advance number one is evangelism number two is influence Satan has a primary assignment to stop both but if for any reason he can't do anything about your receiving Jesus now your personal salvation is a done deal the next place of attack is your influence what is influence influence is the capacity to cause men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty Territories can be changed overnight with the power of influence. Cultures are shaped through influence. The Bible says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Can I tell you, most people downplay the power of influence. At every point in your life, someone is influencing you. And you are to bring the influence of the kingdom. Satan will fight influence in any way he can I want to show you a scripture because the gates of influence is about to open for someone are we together in Isaiah chapter 60 when you read from verse 1 to 3 it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you I would like to quote this many times from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. It says, For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Listen carefully. Verse 2 says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3 influence gentiles all nations shall come not to you to your light and even their arrogant kings their kings already have results they won't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising are we together the end time church is going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom not only through evangelism and discipleship but it will come through influence acts chapter 12. oh someone's life is changing acts chapter 12 from verse 1. please do not forget this scripture and this revelation now watch this you know that the disciples of jesus i want to show you how satan fights influence you know the disciples of Jesus were in different levels there was the 70 or 72 he had the 12 but there were three people 
there were things that they saw the rest did not see and satan marked every one of them he started by beheading james it was peter james and john the threefold cord that cannot be easily, easily broken when he found james and they beheaded him he went straight to paul the bible says they killed james and he saw that it pleased the jews and he went straight to peter during the days of the unleavened bread be patient let's read the bible says when he had apprehended peter he put him in where prison what was he fighting he put him in prison you would think that would be enough but then he brought four quaternions of soldiers to still keep him in prison it was not just confinement he wanted four eight soldiers again covered him intending after easter to bring him forth before the people verse 5 the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison please help me finish the remaining part of that sentence but prayer was made this was what was not done for james unfortunately there is no record that they stood in for James and James died but when Peter was there the church said no way there is something we can do please keep it there we're still reading the Bible says prayers was made without season of the church unto God for him the result verse 6 the Bible says and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains Abba you lock a man in prison tie him with chains and put eight soldiers that's not a fight for liberty is influence and the Bible says that the keepers were there before the door who kept the prison verse 7 and behold the angel of the Lord came in response to prayer listen and a light shined in that prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hands verse 8 the Bible says the angel said guard yourself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 and when he went out listen carefully he followed him and wished not that which was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision now verse 10 the Bible says he held Peter the angel and they passed the first and second ward or gate watch this now they passed the first gate he was no longer in prison but he was still confined they passed the second gate far from the prison but still no liberty and the Bible says and they came to the iron gate which led to where so there is a gate that leads to the city every man's city is his place of influence did the Bible not say you are listen there is a gate that leads to the city when that gate opens the city must see you for who you are and now begin to place a demand the iron gate that leads to the city businessmen hear me you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are not there because there are gates that must open I understand what I'm telling you listen in Zaria one time there are few only few people here that really understand you know that may know Zaria the Lord asked me to trek from a place quite far in town and to trek down till a place called aviation and I was trekking and just speaking over that territory because there are spirits that reside over that place I know what it means for the tulip gates of a city to be opened can I tell you 
you can be doing i've seen many gifted people sir anointed and sincere but the gates that leads to the city has not been opened i've seen business people who cannot understand preachers sincere love god anointed but the two lift gates in ancient times you would never come into a city until the gate is open is that true every city spiritually has gates just because you move there physically does not mean the gate is open there is a protocol to influence now watch this the first gate opened the second gate opened and the bible says this very gate was called the iron gate and my bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder when jesus prophetically in psalm 24 was returning back to the land of the living there was a cry lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors hold on those doors have been there for a long time they are used to closing over people and the gates replied who is this king of glory can i tell you this listen for a few of you who may have seen the posters that and i'm saying this respectfully of my coming into the city when i was praying that map of abuja or something there's one I, I i don't i still don't know the names of your cities you won't believe it cities is city gates there's one map there like that that was what i saw in my vision that was why i told them to put it in the you know the the billboard or whatever it is because you see let me tell you sincerely spiritually speaking gates have seen sit um, um cities have gates you want to understand this properly go to the north you won't get it very well around the south you go to the north you see the entrance of every major place you see that now the gates do not have anything closing them but you enter and believe you are in you the city will show you you are not invited There are many business people in Abuja. You see, the Bible says they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalms 82 and now verse 5. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. It takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to command authority even in prayer the foundation for effective prayer is access to the mysteries of the kingdom so that you pray in keeping with the will of God you can know your prayer will be answered your intelligence is consistent with scripture you are not praying amiss the iron gate that opens to the city can I tell you this some of you here are business people some of you here have schools you're running some of you here might be other ministers who came that there is a gate that has to open but when that gate opens you will marvel and wonder the Bible says Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people you would think he did, he did not know where they were hiding he just there was a chauffeur can i tell you there is an anointing called the hear ye him anointing people don't just listen to you because you have something to say it takes more than that this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased creation was given an instruction hear ye him when that grace comes on your business right from where you are when it comes upon the works of your hands i'm saying this because we're about to pray that that gate in the name of jesus christ 
must be opened hither and thither because the king of glory wants to make a triumphant entry are you ready to pray lift your voice and decree and declare gates a father be open gates a father hither and thither be open gates be open Gates be open. Mande balako shadika te predike te la pasta. The iron gate be broken, be open. Gates of influence, the gate that leads to the city, be open, be open. The King of Glory desires to come in. Be open. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you now. You have done the praying. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be known. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. I want you to be very sensitive now. You have prayed. Let me pray for you. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Sir, ordinarily I would have told you this maybe privately in the office but the Lord is asking me to say it in the open I just saw a vision and I saw you and your wife and I saw it was like two ships and you were walking and you had gotten to the end of one ship and I saw a hand stretched and it held you to another ship and it began to move I believe I not this stand sir I believe that another phase of ministry you hear what I'm saying go and write it down in addition to what you are currently doing another strange apostolic and, dim and prophetic dimension of ministry is opening because this instruction to pray for a long time 
there are many things that God has not said yet that by by the end of it he will tell why he called for a fast like this just believe me that this fasting is midwifing one season into another that's why God is saying I should say it openly so that the day he tells you they will know that it's not you that just said it that's why I'm saying it in the open ordinarily I may just go and tell him in the office I saw a hand like a sheep sheep and just held him and another season so don't you be surprised what will come out by revelation in the course of this fasting do not think it is the flesh but hear me it is another dimension of ministry this is true it is another dimension of ministry and there are three very strong anointings that will in multiplied dimensions would start working in the life of this man and his wife number one is the teaching grace number two is the healing grace number three is the prophetic grace these three graces in strong dimensions you would begin to see testimonies and manifestations of the hand of God this word would not fail it will happen by the Spirit the second thing I want to say and I apologize again God is asking me to say it and I'm saying it in the open your membership have not yet come the people you are raising are leaders by the time the leaders are raised it will be like an inferno of fire the kind of training you are giving these people is not for membership there is a strengthening they are building capacity because the oil stops when there is no more vessel and so he's listen many of you here you think you are just members of a ministry you are the leaders he's building capacity when he's done it was when the ark was ready that the animals started coming they don't come to wait until the ark i'm speaking this by prophecy an ark of three stories of gopher wood is being built even in this ministry and with this man and when that ark is done the same grace that brought the animals on their own they came two by two and seven by seven they will come by the spirit it will be a wonder to behold what God can do with a man who hears him give Jesus praise now I want to pray for you do you believe in the power of God second Corinthians please stand sir please second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 listen after tonight you must do well to go and invite everybody you know look at what I mean as you are here I'm sure some of you is paining you right now that my loved ones should be here I was glad when they said unto me let us go not let me go let us go is wrong when you are going alone it is let us go anything that is godly is always let us let us make let us go and God is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in how many things may abound unto every good work let me explain this scripture that means God is able to coordinate every grace you need and to bring it within your reach this scripture is based on the principle that what is on you is what controls what is around you your results are a report card telling us what is on you or not on you thou anointest my head with oil not my cup it is my head that is anointed but I know the size of what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is overflowing it means what is on me is overflowing so the physical results in your life are attestations to the grace the kind and the level of grace that you carry are we together 
you can know that the grace that is upon you has multiplied by the results that change you can know what kind of grace you carry by the testimonies that recycle around your life they are receipts when they change something changed are we together meetings like this by the Spirit of God leads us to pray but then it gives us an opportunity to be able to take something upon our heads that we did not come to church with you can carry something that you did not come with the Bible says when the donkey of Kish was missing they went three days this young man called Saul hmm. and after three days when they did not find it he said let's return back he said no we've left too much there is a seer let us go to that man the word of the Lord does not fail and as soon as they saw Samuel I was so blessed when your man of God made a profound statement he said God's strategy is man it's not a lie when the devil wants to destroy you he introduces a man when God wants to help you he introduces a man in any case it will still be by the ministry of man are we together we are nothing on our own except for the graces that we carry listen the grace of God is a mysterious advantage when it comes upon a man with understanding it can turn the narrative of your destiny in one day when they met Samuel look at a problem that was costing them so much difficulty but as soon as they met a man look at how he trivialized that problem Samuel said no go up I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started returning home nobody asked the donkey to return home as soon as Saul met with Samuel be careful what you call impossible there are graces that have been anointed to trivialize your challenges and make it look as if the devil does not exist three things happen when Saul met with Samuel number one he said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance and he poured oil on his head and said three things will happen to you number one the ass the donkey that has been missing you will find out that restoration has happened the anointing can bring restoration that means just because it left you does not mean it left the earth it is still there under a certain condition it can come back number two he said on your way going you will find three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and they will give it to you as if they did not know what to do with the bread they bought bread and were on their way home but because of what was on you they will give you two loaves say favor say honor number three it says you will come to a garrison of the Philistines and when you get there something will happen to you and you will now begin to prophesy and he so prophesied that they said is Saul when did Saul who trained you we know how long it took for us to be prophets by what mystery did you access this anointing that by April you will invite someone and say come to my house and you'll be driving very far thinking is where he knew you to be the last time you met and he will tell you no 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 I forgot to tell you I'm no longer there listen can I tell you this please hear me I believe in diligence I believe in process but there is a prophetic advantage to living can I tell you this true dominion the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not things time you are truly working in dominion when you can compress time and I will restore not the things the years let me tell you how God restores and I will pray with you I hope I'm not wasting your time that means 
you see in the presence of God there's nothing like past present and future that's a reality that only resides within the realm of men he only broke his realm into this tripartite the trinity of time past present and future to help mankind relate with him but God does not live in time he does not even live in eternity because eternity is also time it's just time without end God's realm is called now everything is a present reality you see in truth so when God reaches into what you call he can go into your yesterday and your tomorrow you see physically when you live yesterday you don't go back again that privilege was not given to men ordinarily except by the gifts of the spirit and you can tap into information but from a physical standpoint when it's gone it's gone but God will find out based on his predetermined counsel listen carefully how God restores the things that should have happened to you because with every time God gives you there are things that should have happened if by demonic manipulation or your ignorance or carelessness that thing did not happen God will go back into it and push the thing to your future and make it happen again are we together so if by God's predetermined counsel you should be in your own house by 2018 but by lack of sensitivity you did not take advantage of the prophetic word that came from the man of God maybe at that time you were not serious spiritually and you trivialized the word you see that now the house you are building now is not the same one that should have come so what God does is that instead of you going through the labor of building it he can fix that rep that blessing under a class of blessings called prepared blessings hear me there are times that God will send rain on your farm and the crops will grow well you will do the harvesting and the storage but there are times the urgency in your life does not require corn it requires bread directly both corn and bread it is still the same God who sends it God is able to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater what if the sower is hungry because there are times the sower is hungry and he will need to eat to have the strength to go and sow so God gives you bread so that from the strength of that bread you can go and sow are you learning now believing that the only channel of God's blessing is your farm you are limiting his potentials manna can come from heaven manna coming from heaven does not stop you from sowing it's an act of his mercy to make sure you are satisfied early then you go and sow your name is to be hallowed I spent one month it was a February sir the whole of that one month I was praying and studying on favor because I didn't come from a background that would easily give me that privilege and I knew that if I were to do ministry with integrity I would need the favor of God when I found the keys and found the grace I knew this was it I want to pray some prayers for you now and I want you to receive it listen you will thank your man of God and you will see the sincerity and the love in his heart after this meeting and the testimonies that follow listen it takes more than desire to excel the kind and the quality of grace that is upon you when we honor men we don't honor bodies we honor the sacrifice of alignment alongside the election of grace that has captured this vast dimension of graces upon their lives are we together i want to pray for this grace for favor number one 
Exodus 11 and verse 3. Please give us Exodus 11 and verse 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Notice, if it is favor, it works with the power of sight. That means when the favor of God is upon you, the only person who should not bless you is a blind man. The moment they can make contact with you, they are compelled by an anointing. Hold on. The reason why Moses was great was that he was in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of the people. When favor comes on you, both the king and the people see you in a way that is deserving of favor. Exodus 3, 21. And I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of the Egyptians. What is the proof of the favor? And it shall come to pass that when ye go, prophesy to yourself, I shall not go empty. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of how many? All them that looked upon her. Not them who wanted to favor her. Your mistake was just to look. The moment you can look, the anointing works by the power of sight. Please, I'm not just exciting you. Believe in what I'm telling you. She obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17, same chapter. Read verse 17 if you're a Christian. One to read. And the king loved Esther above. Stop. Above. Above. That means before Esther came, there were others he was looking at. But as soon as she showed up, he loved them, but he loved her above. And she obtained grace and favor again in his more than all the virgins. So that he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Are you ready to receive? I want to pray for you now. The power of God will come on you. You don't have to kneel. Just believe. There is a lady here who is going to shout right now a loud shout under the anointing the moment that happens that grace for favor will begin to move across this is what i just saw in the spirit the power of god is coming on it you it's not something you can stand it is it is these are dynamics of the anointing a loud shout is an anointing of the spirit that will come right now i'm ready to pray for you now Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of the living God, help them please. I decree right now, may that grace and that unction, my goodness, let it come upon you right now. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that anointing. Help that lady please. Supernatural favor. I decree and declare I place it as a mantle upon your head. Go and excel. I shift systems and structures by the power of prophecy. May that grace rest upon you. Find favor with systems. Find favor with structures. Find favor with Egyptians. Find favor with kings. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus
Hallelujah. There is honor is a grace. Listen, you can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred upon you by another. Honor is a grace that is transferable. Do you know what is, is honor? Honor means to be seen for who you truly are and to be rewarded to match the true worth of your person. That's what honor means. Favor means to be preferred, but honor means to be given the regard that befits your sacrifice. You can be great, but if honor is not on you, you will not be rewarded to match your true worth. Let me show you a scripture. Numbers 27 from verse 18 to 20. Let's hurry up for time. We're wrapping up now. The Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit already and lay your hands upon him is that in your bible verse 2 it says set him before eliaza the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight verse 20 please read it if you're a christian one to read and thou shalt put some of your honor on him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. People don't listen to you just because you are sincere. There is honor that comes upon you. Call Moses. He's already filled with the Holy Spirit. But lay your hands upon him. And then in anointing him, don't leave him like that. Transfer some of your honor to him. Honor is transferable. Can I pray for you? Father, just help those under the anointing. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, may that grace right now, may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. That grace for honor everything that has despised your grace everything that has despised the investment of god upon your life i change that narrative by this mantle in the name of jesus christ help them please in the name of jesus christ hallelujah who is joseph joseph i'm hearing a name joseph who is that joseph we're wrapping up. What do you do, my friend? I cannot. What do you hold on? What do you do? What do you do? Who is a who is a music minister here? You is, is he a member of me? Huh? You sing. Listen to me. You see that prayer on the iron gate go and pray that prayer when you go back i want to pray for you because truly god wants to lift you but this this is not just by human connections it's not what this is by the spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may that grace that gives visibility something is coming on you right now take that grace now in the name of Jesus Christ you will never be the same take that grace by the power of the Holy Spirit God. 
Is there anybody here that works in Access Bank? Access Bank. Access Bank. Oh. I know him. I didn't even know he was one. There are strange liftings that are coming to people in this place. I stretch my hands, three of you, you don't have to kneel. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place an anointing upon you that in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, this grace for favor, let it come upon you right now for your lifting. You take that grace, find favor, even with your administrators in the name of Jesus and every conspiracy of darkness to implicate you we cancel it right now by the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayers I want to release the grace for speed truly there is a grace for speed now hear me I don't know how we're going to do it I just have maybe less than two three minutes and I'm done thank you for your patience with me but I want to release this grace from the depth of my heart I told you true dominion is dominion over time now whether you are an usher or not please help me in this prayer because the hand of God will come on people and they will start running physically I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves and you can bring them out Right now, I stretch my hands. This, this ministry would be characterized by and with a strange order of speed. I stretch my hands at the count of three, my God. I'm just seeing fire rest on people. Please bring those under the anointing. Right now, at the count of three. One. Bring them up. Two. Three, take that grace now. Help them. Speed. Speed. Help them, please. My God. Speed. Speed. Receive that grace. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab. I command speed. Speed in business. Speed in ministry. Speed in career. I cause the root of delay by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I cause a bakato shedegata. Prateske tebe katosiata. Empra katos katia. Receive speed. Receive speed. Receive speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. You'll never be the same. Speed. Ten years in one year. Ten years, I prophesy. Ten years in one year. The results of ten years in one year. Ten years in one year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help that woman, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please hear me. I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God. In three months from today, according to the mystery of the ark in the house of Obed Edom, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak to you between now and the next three months, I shift you to a new season. Help them. I shift you to a new season. Hear me. We're wrapping up. That night could not the king sleep. And he said, Bring me the chronicles. 
and they opened the chronicles and he saw where Mordecai had saved the life of the king and was not rewarded hear me many of you have been part of the success story of many and yet you've been forgotten I stand by prophecy let the book of remembrance be open now there is an anointing coming on your wife sir I'm seeing an angel pour like oil on her and the Lord is saying she's entering a season of reward this is what I'm seeing in the spirit she's entering a strange season of reward let me say it again anyone who has forgotten you I stand in partnership with the grace of your man of God may that book of remembrance be opened now is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake in the name of Jesus the son of the living God by this fire that is coming upon you I decree and declare wherever the helpers of your destiny are in this Abuja I speak to the north I speak to the east I speak to the south I speak to the west I command them to show up for you now hallelujah last prayer point please hear me the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established it says believe in his prophets so shall you prosper can I tell you this there are different dimensions and levels of wealth there is wealth that comes by providing value there is wealth that comes by relationships but there is wealth that comes by prophecy he says by this time tomorrow and when he said it the one who the king leans on said even if God will open the windows of heaven might this happen I want to pray for you praying the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness however in this kingdom we are not just left with economic principles there is a superior advantage that in addition to the value that we provide in addition to the relationships that come based on our impacting lives my life is a testimony I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters I pray for you finally in this prayer session of fasting and praying in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God the same grace that took a raven and it brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith the same grace that took coin and put it in the mouth of a fish the same grace that turned five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand people with twelve baskets remaining by the power of the prophetic in the name of Jesus I connect you to strategic relationships strategic relationships in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ I pray when physical victory manifests is because that victory has been established in the spirit please hear me it is not when your job manifests that God answered you <clears throat> when you deal with it in the realm of the spirit and it's finished you will find out that you can wake up in the morning that's why you see people come for service and sometimes they are ministered to there are a few people who may walk back maybe they, their healing has started and they did not feel anything you know and they may feel disappointed you hear them testify that they went home and slept and woke up because once it is done in the realm of the spirit that is it Goliath died in the realm of the spirit David killed Goliath before he met him there and he said mr. man you are standing just as a mass of interruption I'm going to bring you down even with a stone so when we are going to pray now please I want you to pray with seriousness there are things that you wrote there are sicknesses in your body can I tell you we are in the days where headache can become cancer thanks to demons 
you will feel a little headache something that you will just say ah, it's paining me the next time the pain goes to this side then it goes to another place unconnected i'm not a doctor but you will know this is a demon spirit you hear people telling you there's something roaming around my body have you heard people say that it starts from my head you know how hard it is to move around your body even god had to put veins and arteries and here is a demon spirit walking around freely until you stop it by the power of the holy ghost how about businesses that are going down from january your business has been going down and you've just been watching it thank god for principles listen we are people of principles and we're intelligent people but we are people who place superior honor to the realm of the spirit the physical realm is a child a slave helpless slave to the realm of the spirit if you do not deal with things spiritually whatever effort you are making physically is a total waste of time i assure you if you're a ministry here as a man of God, it is not just by invitation, poster, social media. Those are physical things and they are profitable. The real victory is in the realm of the spirit. Apostle, why is it that people do not like me? I'm a sincere person. Every time someone wants to help me, they seem to forget. You think they make themselves forget? There are wicked spirits. What do you think made the wine presser to forget Joseph? and added two more years one man's forgetfulness added another man's pain hallelujah how about someone who just received some money that should bless the family and wipe their tears and all of a sudden three people went down somebody needs a surgery five million another person needs a surgery eight million another person has a mysterious sickness that we must fly the person to uk to check you calculate everything is the exact same money you collected someone just wants to help you and the devil will masquerade and use certain faces in the dream to now come and appear as an angel of light and say don't help this person that person is carrying a familiar spirit and your destiny helper gets up in the morning in fear because the devil used your face or used something else to money and you find out that uh, let me tell you africa especially is a place where people respect the realm of the spirit someone can be a very intelligent person he goes to bed and the devil just uses your face you come with a knife in the dream supposedly to kill the person the person stands up and says, oh, so this is my enemy. You go to the office the next day. Good afternoon, sir. You are leaving this job now. What did I do? No, before you kill me, I will kill you. Both of you are innocent. There is a spirit joining. This thing has happened even between husband and wife. Have you seen it happen? That a man will go to sleep. A wicked spirit will use the face of the wife. And the man gets up and says, no, no way. Not in this house. And the devil is just standing stealing killing destroying in the name of jesus tonight by the power that raised jesus from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ every spirit masquerading through situations and circumstances to abort the glory of God in your life goes down this night goes down this night goes down this night The same way the Lord can make it happen that someone goes to bed and suddenly he has a dream and it's about you and the person is thirsty and you are bringing water the person gets up in the morning and says you you got a job in this company when two weeks ago come you are promoted to my PA what happened I had a dream and I saw you giving me water and in my mind I interpret it to mean you're a good person Ah, life do you know, I really feel sorry for people who downplay the realm of the spirit. I'm a person of principles. There are, it's not all about just demons and the realm of the spirit. But let me tell you, in order of priority, the physical realm came as the child of the realm of the spirit. That means for anything physical, it is only the after effect of something that has been settled in the spirit. Do you know a true story and then we'll begin to pray one time the lord opened my eyes and i saw something i saw someone who in the realm of the spirit he had already died but in the physical he was still walking he was still alive but in the realm of the spirit like this person has been buried 
in a coffin over now that person will be walking yet not knowing that you've been finished anything can kill you including a bike you just see that the bike passed and just hit someone and he fell down and they say both bones broke someone fell children go to pluck mango from a tree they fall from that tree and clean themselves and stand up and climb again and yet someone just fell from a bike and both of his bones you think that is just a fall listen we are god gave us a mind to think but let's be careful so that we do not allow the devil cheat us by just folding our arms when you see evil call it for what it is and deal with it by the blood ah, what is this pain that i'm having mysterious pain and the devil says cancer like it happened to your father, like it happened to this, and said, no, it will not happen to me. I went to school. That's not how the realm of the spirit works. You stand there. Listen, there is a way you open fire at the devil. Huh? You have drawn a line. Anything you permit will grow. Hear me? Anything you permit will grow. You permit failure, it grows. You permit the spirit of death. It takes one step towards your house. You turn back. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is how believers are taught to maintain victory. Hallelujah. Apostle, but you know the truth is that the way after the pandemic it affected everybody my business has gone down till tomorrow i agree and i sympathize with you but do you know that for your business to come back it is going to take the favor of god the blessing like i taught the ministry of men have you called the men no i'm sure that god will just make it happen whereas somebody in the midst of that pandemic held on to the horns of the altar and shouted the door for his new level to open up I don't know who is angry in this place tonight but in the name of Jesus I came here to release my faith with you that anything that does not name the name of Christ it must live your life now please open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to declare that in the name of Jesus the son of the living God my life must be a capture of victory total victory total deliverance total liberation he who the son sets free is free indeed by the power of the holy ghost someone is praying every mysterious sickness roaming around my body i curse you by the god of heaven spirit of death i call you by your name and i banish you from my life banish you from my family banish you from my business someone is praying Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to lead you to pray the prayer that Jabez prayed. Number one, it says, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. As I mention them, I will lead you to pray. This is the miracle service. I want you to participate. If you want to hold hands with someone to encourage you, that is, you, you can do that. But by all means, any spirit of slumber that wants you to sleep or just fold your arms and watch people is cheating you. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that by mercy, let your blessing rest upon me let your blessing rest upon me rest upon my family open your mouth and begin to pray the blessing of the lord that make it rich and added no sorrow the blessing of the lord that causes a man to prevail 
Reketos kete brente ke parukatos. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, bless me, bless me. I activate the blessing upon my life. I activate the blessing. Ke brote ke tos ke te breke te pata. I decree and declare, blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed in Abuja, blessed in Lagos, blessed in the United Kingdom, blessed in South Africa, blessed in the United States, in the name of Jesus. Man of God, pray. Pray the blessing of the Lord. Pray it upon your spirit. Pray it upon your children. Now pray it upon the works of your hands. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the country. Blessed shall be your needing trough. Go ahead and pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. All the overflows, make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the blessing is upon me. 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 Speaking loud and clear. Speaking loud and clear. Speaking louder than any curse. Speaking that louder than any demonic thing. Minutes you are praying. Shateke pakato safras katebekata. Kapra teke parako shagates. The blessing is upon me. Prospering the works of my hands. The blessing is upon me. Manifesting as signs and wonders. The blessing is upon me. Turning me into a mysterious sign and wonder. Blessing is upon me. Someone pray. Shaleke peketos kata frendeke parusiata. Embra kato kapres kate peketos. Sobantos shoto balekatos. Ibra to seveze kate belekatos yata. For in Jesus' name we pray. Ah! For in Jesus' name we pray. I tell you things are shifting in the spirit now watch this do you know what allowed the flood to come what allowed the flood to come was that the blessing was withdrawn and was only it was completely withdrawn and that was the only possibility for the flood to come so when the flood was over watch this now when the flood was over the flood of noah now remember everything and everyone except noah his wife the three sons and their wives and the animals that were in the ark am i right on that these were the only things that were alive you find that noah came out and then noah reared an altar you find that in genesis chapter 8 and verse 21 and 22 he, he carried some of the animals that were left some of the animals came two by two some of the animals came seven by seven. You will see that even some that were left, Noah still slaughtered them and they died. But watch what happened. When God wanted the earth to increase again, give us Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. I want to show you the power of the blessing. What did God do to Noah? Same thing he did to Adam. You see, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful. Does that sound like something he had said before? multiply that means every time god sees small things what he does to increase them is to make this same thing keep this scripture there because this is going to be your prayer that means in god's mind what it means to be blessed is to be fruitful what it means to be blessed is to multiply what it means to be blessed is to replenish 
You are not blessed in God's mind until he sees fruitfulness, until he sees multiplication, until he sees the ability to replenish and to subdue. This is God's idea. Every time you hear him speaking a blessing, he will break it down and say, this is my idea of being blessed. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Are you ready to pray? We are still praying the blessing prayer. Say, Father, Father as a result of the blessing, that is upon me I speak to my destiny be fruitful multiply and replenish open your mouth and begin to pray I am blessed blessed to be fruitful blessed to multiply nothing remains small in my life but the Spirit of God and God bless Noah and his sons and God bless Koinonia and all those connected to her by prophecy and God bless Noah and his sons and God bless Noah and his sons God bless Noah and his sons. You can call the name of your children. You can call the name of every company, everyone who is under your care. Declare upon them, be fruitful, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Replenish. Replenish, replenish. Replenish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next prayer. I'm telling you something is shifting in your life. He said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. You want to understand this? Let's go to Isaiah 54 from verse 1 and 3. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. He said, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Verse 2, it says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitation. Spare not and lengthen thy cord and strengthen thy stakes. Why? Verse 3, hallelujah. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Look at me. Do you know what it means to be enlarged? To be enlarged means to grow. That's how we grow. Is that true? We grow through enlargement. There are people who, respectfully speaking, I got to find out a few cases where some people remain children even in their, as adults. You still see them like children, like babies. It's a medical condition that people remain literally, you look at them, their face, nothing changes. There is no growth. There is no enlargement. Yet some of them are 25, 30 years, and they, are still, they have the voice of children, everything around them. And when we talk of enlargement, we're not just talking of physical growth, financial growth, spiritual growth. The level of grace you've been functioning on for 10 years is still the same. The level of favor is still the same. Did the Bible not say grace and peace can be multiplied? Are you ready to pray that prayer of enlargement? That Father, I'm tired of being at this level for a long time. Enlarge me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Spiritually. 
this level of my prayer life this level of my word study life someone is praying enlarge me by the spirit of the living God enlarge me in ministry enlarge me Shapakato parakato shafragates Krasagata farasko sebelegos Embrakato shafrandes kalebash Kratege belegates sefraska tibalakos yata Enlarge my coast Enlarge my coast Enlarge my coast Enlarge koinonia Enlarge koinonia Enlarge my spiritual life Enlarge every aspect of my life In the name of Jesus Christ Shabrakate pekatoska frateke parusiata, kaprakate beleko sate fraskate beledusiata. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, don't be tired. You will soon sit down. But listen, please look at me. What is the difference between a one room and a duplex? What is the difference? Space. Am I right on that? What is the difference between a great duplex and a mansion, as you call it? Space. What you can do in a one room, what you cannot do in a one room, you are able to do it in a duplex. Am I right on that? Now, just respectfully speaking, if you have one room, everything is there. The kitchen is there. The whatever is there. Are we together? Smallness has the characteristic effect of constraint. It does not give you the opportunity to be efficient are we together now so imagine that you move from one room to a two bedroom now you can convert one maybe to be a library one to be a guest room have you seen people now respectfully speaking have you seen for instance say a couple a husband and a wife and maybe two children and all they have is one room you've seen what happens in the night the father is constrained maybe he even has to sleep on a chair for the wife and maybe the children and maybe the little baby you see that now did you not read in your Bible that Solomon was judging a case of two prostitutes where because of the constraint of space they slept on their visions and one killed they killed their children because of lack of space let me tell you enlargement is a blessing what 10,000 cannot do, 1 million can do. Are we together now? Yes. Oh, my man needs to be treated and the bill is 200,000. And that innocent woman is about to die because all you have is 10,000. But when God enlarges you, you have more space. You can even be a blessing. What this level of anointing can do, cannot do. This level of anointing can do. Are we together now? Yes, this level of anointing can only lead you to pastor 50 members, not to insult, but that is what it can do. It cannot bring you a global ministry this way. No, no. You cannot put the tire of a tricycle on a tractor or a, a bulldozer or a lorry. Can that work? But they are all tires. So when you bring that small tire, how many of you have seen spare tires of cars that look very small? Because you were not supposed to drive with it for a long time. It's only sufficient to take you to the mechanic. You see some of these giant cars and they come with enlarged tires. And sometimes when smaller cars are struggling because of the pothole, those cars can come and pass as if they are, they are not even aware. That's what enlargement does. When you are limited, when you are constrained, five children, you are living on 50,000. It's not a blessing, no. Let me tell you the truth. Not in our world today. You are anointed, you pray, you have to pray for one week for headache to go. You can't have a ministry that is flourishing that way. I told you, people don't follow men, they follow results. When you are a man that commands that result, it will look like they are following you. But what they really follow are results. It takes a level of dedication and loyalty and training by God for people to look beyond results and now start following men. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my... I've prayed this prayer many times. 
this ministry did not start like this and this ministry will not remain like this because that grace for enlargement is there so why is it that your life is remaining that way one more time i want you to refuse look at every area of your life that has refused to grow and declare let that anointing for enlargement rest upon it open your mouth and pray one last time father enlarge me by the spirit of the living god enlarge me by the spirit of the living god for the sake of your glory for the excellency of your name Please pray. Hallelujah. Number three, let your hand be with me. Hallelujah. Let your hand be with me. Let your hand be with me. You are going to pray. This is what is responsible for advancement. This is what is responsible for speed. When the hand of the Lord comes upon men, they refuse to stay, not just at that level, but even in that location. It is God that moves men. When you find stagnancy, what you need is the hand of God. The hand of God moves men. The Bible says it was the Lord that caused Moses to advance. Shanika paruka tebash, kratos ketebelekotia. Say, Father. Father. One more time, say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. By your hand advance me by your hand advance my destiny open your mouth and begin to pray by your hand by your hand by your hand advance me in ministry by your hand advance me in every area of life someone is praying advance me advance me by your spirit hallelujah 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 and with the last prayer point it will now lead me to begin to minister as fast as we can. Fire is going to begin to fall in this place now. Give us the last prayer point. Keep me from evil. Listen. The psalmist said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the almighty is that true verse 2 says give us verse 2 i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust verse 3 surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pestilence verse 4 he shall cover thee with his feather and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be and thy buckler verse 5 it says thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day verse 6 nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor the destruction that wasted at noonday seven a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side but it shall not come nigh thee. Last verse. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. Do you know what it means for God to keep you? To keep you means, Lord, I will not die before my time. Hallelujah. I was listening to a video this morning by late Archbishop Benson Idahosa. And he was teaching somewhere in the States... And he was just sharing how that when God gave him an instruction in Benin then and he went and he was praying and praying and God gave him an instruction for seven days to go out every night at the roundabout alone and begin to pray and declare and say Benin belongs to Jesus. 
and he said he prayed it, the spirit of fear came what if you would die he said in one of the days when you got there he saw parts of animals that were caught and on them his name was written there can I tell you saying I do not trouble anybody nobody would trouble me is a joke all it takes to be a victim of evil is to be born the moment you find yourself here you have to understand the warfare dimension of life are we together now I'm saying this because many of you do not know you're a man of God here I want you to listen daily daily there are demons and spirits it's only when we go to heaven that I will know how many shrines how many pots how many sacrifices carry my name daily but they'll continue to boil it as dinner lunch supper it, it will have no effect not because listen not because we are powerful on our own we have found from scripture that there is immunity in that name that there is immunity in that blood are you ready to pray now say father, father. By the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant, every covenant tying me to failure, to death, to weakness, to defeat right now by the blood, let it be broken. Open your mouth and pray. Every covenant. Every covenant tying me to death, witchcraft, defeat, yokes, ordinances. No matter how long be broken, no matter how long be broken. No matter how long be broken, every covenant that says people will not rise, that says people will not shine, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crown and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crown. Alabara. Oh, glorious God, say, oh. to be very sensitive listen there was a time in my life I have met angels I have encountered demon spirits by the privilege of God's grace I have encountered Jesus the living Christ the realm of the spirit is not an unfamiliar path I know a bit about how spiritual things work the first time I would encounter a demon spirit I was praying in the night somewhere in Zaria and there was a generator close to that place and I was praying and going close to that place and the next thing I moved here and there is a solid being standing this is not vision and the only thing he said was get back and when he said that I looked and I spontaneously 
I just blasted in tongues and like you are seeing this and you don't see it again. And I said, what is this? The next time I would have this, I was praying. I think I was in a period of fasting and praying or so. And then my room, the ceiling just disappeared. And then I'm seeing this giant creature. It looks like a dinosaur very mighty the eyes will be like this the size of one man's head you can imagine my head being the eye so imagine how the head will be and it had a long tail but that tail had its own life that means you could detach the tail from the being and it will still be alive red eyes and it was looking at me and it says so you think you will how did what i can't even remember what so you think you would bring god's people into abundance I remember and I said ah so this is the spirit that sits upon men's destinies they don't know they think it's joblessness they think it's just family conflict they don't know that these are wicked spirits by reason of the apostolic and the prophetic call I have been exposed to visions I have encountered spirits some of the songs that you hear us sing I didn't write them these were songs that I heard from the realm of the spirit and I brought it down and wrote it. So when you see me minister to people, I'm not ministering from a standpoint of ignorance. There are real spirits sitting on the destinies of men and they may not know, ladies and gentlemen, whoever told the woman who was bound for 18 years that there was an actual spirit holding her like that this woman kept going hoping that things would change if spirits can bind men can they bind businesses if spirits can they bind destinies and Jesus looks at the woman and says woman thou art loose from your infirmity she did not even know what happened suddenly a spirit that has been comfortable for 18 years that woman would have remained like that some of you have had some conditions around your life um it's like that i just feel dizzy sometimes i grew up like that you are like that woman that has been bound but jesus came and he said no matter how long it has been the longest condition we know that a man has been in in the bible was 38 years we don't know how long it took job the bible does not record time but at least we know that the longest recorded time where a man stayed in his tragedy was 38 years. Then there was 12 years. But when Jesus came and said, Woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. And then he laid hands and took that woman up. And when the other people started talking stupid talk, he said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, all these years. That means in Satan's economy, Time does not matter. Don't say, after 10 years, I will be free. You will never be free because of the passage of time. You will be free by the forceful manifestation of the power, the name, and the blood. So listen, I'm saying that so that as I begin to minister now, will be very fast. That every condition you know, long-standing conditions, don't tolerate it and say it's been there. This bad luck has followed me since I was five years. Now I'm 50 years. It's like that. Anytime people want to do things, make sure it gives way this night. The man was sitting at Bethesda, John 5. The Bible says something happened there that every time an angel will come and stare the waters. But the man had no one to help him. And then Jesus comes to him. The Bible says he was there for 38 years. Calls him an impotent man. Did his father not give him a name? What was his name? There are many of you, your condition has swallowed your name. That people only, that guy, that family that has bad luck, as if they don't have a name. That woman whose children are all miserable. That one who's, that, that church that does not grow. The impotent man. And Jesus said, no, this is not how it works. 
you notice all these sick people the Bible did not seem to care about their names because there's something about demonic oppression it it does not just ruin your life it ruins your name notice the woman with the issue of blood no name the man at blind Bartimaeus, no name the man at the pool no name because every time the devil attacks among the many things he's looking for is your name your honor is in your name your reputation is in your name i'm saying this because i want to minister to people whose names have been diminishing you may not have something wrong with your life but your condition has swallowed up your name honor that god has given your family is about going down because it does not look it looks like there are conditions that have stained your name hallelujah every time you see kings rise the Bible will always call their name even if they were given other names but when you find people plagued with conditions you hardly hear their names the woman with the issue of blood the man born blind the man at the pool blind Bartimaeus the man who was sitting at gate beautiful look at that oppression among the many things it seeks to take away from you is your name because you see part of the blessing that God gave Abraham in Genesis 12 is a great name I will bless you and I will make your name great if you are great alone your children cannot be great because there's nothing for them to inherit when you go you go with your greatness but when your name is great anybody who comes under that name can continue being great today we mention names when you talk about names of you know American presidents great people today they are long gone you see but their names so when Satan wants to destroy you he does something to your name are you ready to pray So when you see me minister deliverance, it's not just about people shouting and coming out and rolling under the anointing. No, 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 no. Deliverance has nothing to do with shouting and rolling. It's about taking authority. Are we together now? That which is, is fighting all of these things, that, as I mentioned in your life, they clear out of the way, fighting your ministry, your health, your life, and all of a sudden you will find out that after deliverance, the Bible says there shall be holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Deliverance happens upon Mount Zion. That is the proper place for deliverance. I'm, I'm ready to pray now. You will not do anything yet. Just, just listen to me. You see, the thing with the anointing is that you have to wait on God. You don't assume. This is what the Lord is speaking to my ears. And he's telling me now that as in this silence, that the spirit of God, there are people and destinies that he wants to uproot things. And the moment that happens, the power of God is going to start moving. Please, I want you to bring those people here. You will not need to shout. I'm the one who will just make a statement and uprooting. I'm seeing like a weed. You know how a farmer is removing weed. This is what I'm saying. Father, you have spoken and in the name of Jesus, I declare that everyone under the sound of my voice, please, when you just bring those people out, ushers or all those who need to help, help them, let's make it very fast so that we'll finish on time. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone who has had a planting in their life or their family that needs to be uprooted. My God, I'm seeing fire in this place. In the name of Jesus, right now, let it be uprooted. Bring them out. Ali Shabaraso Sabasa. Kela Tobash. Whether you're an usher or not, please help them. If anyone is under the anointing close to you, just bring them out so that we'll save time. Bring them out. This is an instruction that the Holy Ghost gave. You will never stand, I'm telling you, if, the, if, there, is, if there is something to be uprooted, there is an energy, a, a force from heaven. Please bring them.
men and women. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by God, that tree will be uprooted. That's what God is doing right now. Uprooting by the Spirit of God. Uprooting by the Spirit of God. You will marvel at the testimonies that follow. Uprooting things. Look at the wonder-working power of Jesus. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. Bring them out. Yeshua Hallelujah. Now, something mysterious is going to happen here now. There are people, watch this. I just saw fire through the congregation. Please help them. There are people who will start running. This is not speed. This is, this is a deliverance. But they will start running. Hold them and bring them to the front. This is not speed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the ministry of fire that everyone under any captivity in the name of Jesus Christ by this sign that God has given may the Lord himself begin to bring them out now bring them out now please help the ushers heba shaba sada veleketosh Oppression comes to an end by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me talk to those outside. Not the other overflows, just outside. Those outside, I want you to lift your hands. I want to pray for you. The Lord is showing me something. I want to pray for those outside right now. Lift your hands. At the count of three, those outside, I want you to shout the name Jesus. And as you shout that name Jesus, the hand of the Lord is going to come on a few people and there will be massive deliverance. Just the overflow outside. As I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I want you to carry those outside and bring them to the front by the spirit of the living God. God is doing a very marvelous work in their lives. Now, let me pray for everyone. Anyone here under the plague of witchcraft? Yokes of ancestry. You are about to shout the name Jesus. My God, I'm seeing fire falling already. Yokes of ancestry at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three shout Jesus be released now be released now be released now be released now business is under siege families under siege destiny is under siege bring them out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Hallelujah. 
the Lord wants me to speak to the men. There are spirits that have tied men in many families so that they will not rise. It's like the men become the women and the women are the men. They have to depend on the women to feed. I'm seeing at least eight people with this case. Right now the fire of God is coming on all those men. Inside, outside, everywhere. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Every man be delivered now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every altar tying down men, tying down destinies. Give way now. Give way now. Give way now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name victory. 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 We don't have all the time. Um, my, my intention is for us to finish on time. So I'm not going to be doing too much of um, but I'm hearing the name victory. Wherever that person, who is victory? Your name is victory. I want to pray for you. God has remembered your family. I release grace upon you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. God has remembered your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Abdullahi? I'm hearing a name, this, this is, I don't know if it's your name, your son name, but I'm hearing the name Abdullahi. Abdullahi, you would think that this is supposed to be a northern name, Abdullahi. I just heard that name. I don't know where that person is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, the mantle that has been looking for you, that is searching for your head, in Jesus' name, let it rest on you now. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, Rachel, I'm hearing the name Rachel. Please make sure you are organized. Don't, don't, don't cause confusion. Once, if I call you, if it's not your name, you can stand anywhere there. I, I'm going to pray for those in front. Rachel, who is Rachel? Hello, Shali Ke Krosasia Hasanda Balakos Yevesh. There is a family that God is delivering. Somebody's going to shout right now. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a spirit because I'm seeing that this week that is coming, I'm seeing written obituary. And there is a family. I'm not a prophet of doom. God sends, redeems. There is somebody right now, that spirit, in the name of Jesus. I know you by name and I declare, let that family go now. 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 The family of Rachel. Let that family go now. Let that family go now. Your father is a police officer. Your father is a police officer. Where is he? Where? Huh? Are you from the east? Yes, sir. Enugu? Yes, sir. Where is he? It's in Enugu. This is what God is revealing to me. Listen to me. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing something happening and they are going to fight some people, you know, people like are fighting and I'm seeing something that is not good. But in the name, I don't know you, oh my, my friend. And I'm not, you believe what I'm telling you? Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, you reveal to redeem. We, we are standing here, but in the name of Jesus, we pray that anything that wants to destroy, and I use him as a point of contact, because what God says to one, he says to all. Anyone here, you have your loved ones, either in the police, DSS, military, air force, I declare supernatural preservation. Supernatural preservation. They shall not die. They shall not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, may the Lord preserve your father. In the name of Jesus. 
this lady kneeling down, lifting her hands. I'm seeing you wearing a police cap. Stand up. Who is it you or who? Is there anybody around your life? I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, anything that will bring you to have any kind of demonic trouble that you need to go to the police station right now. I'm seeing fire from your feet to your head. I command it to give way now. Because I'm seeing a police cap on her head and I'm wondering what this is for. There's someone in the worship team. I just saw light. I don't know who that person is. The fire of God. The Lord is saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. This, this mystery of evil that has sat on your family is coming to an end. We declare it an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is a mother here. One of your prayer requests is for your daughter who has not given birth. Now, I'm not saying if you are trusting God, this is a mother who came and she's trusting for her daughter. I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, you have come, you have stood in for your daughter by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let your daughter return with her children rejoicing. Now, all those in front here, I want to rebuke these wicked spirits by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every legal access Satan has over your life, I declare it is broken now. And Satan, I declare as one sent by God, release your destinies now. Out of them now, in the name of Jesus, out of their destinies, out of their lives, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing someone. You have a very interesting condition. You can snore from, like if you are lying down there, somebody who is a long distance from your place can hear you snore. Many people have told you this thing. And you felt very, I, I don't know why God is showing me this, but it's a condition that God wants me to pray for you for so that one day you don't lie down and then don't, don't just wake up. This is a serious medical condition. Is there someone like that? The Lord is ministering that to me. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I want to pray for that person. And then, number two, very quickly, Madam, thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Let's celebrate her. Takes a lot of courage. Please stand up, madam. I want to pray for you. The devil is a liar. How long has this been? It's a long time. Very long time. Yes, sir. My friend, I want to pray for you. I don't know if there's a medical condition for it. I'm, I presume there might be. But my job is to do everything God has asked me to do. So I'm going to pray for you. The devil is a liar. That satanic thing must leave. Listen, to the silliest of things, huh? When you see God bring a word like this, it's because someone's life depends on it. And for all of you who are here, thank you for, this is a family of faith. You see, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Father, just, can you just make contact with your, your neck just as a point of contact? Father, you reveal to redeem. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands now. Let that demonic thing go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it leave, never to return again. Something is leaving this guy, this guy on white. I'm seeing something like a rope on your neck. Out of him now, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring you life, I bring you healing. That choking feeling. It's not an ordinary snore, like you are just snoring because you did not bend well. This is a satanic thing. And you don't pray for them, they will go to bed one night and that's how it will be over for them. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. In the name of Jesus, let it be over now. In Jesus name. God bless you. Now, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. There are two cases that I want to pray for and then I pray for healing. The Lord is ministering this to me and I don't want you to feel bad. There are people, um, if, if you are to come out here, you have just two minutes to come out very quickly. Any and all kinds of satanic addictions, addictions that want to kill you, any kind of addiction whatsoever, 
that has overwhelmed you and God has been speaking to you and you are saying, Apostle, I want to break free from this. I want to give you two minutes. Come and stand before the Lord right now. While they are doing that, let's begin to pray. Don't sit back there when you know that God wants to bring you victory. Once and for all. Drunkenness, pornography, masturbation, every kind of addiction. Some of you may be on some things that you take to be high addiction even stealing can be an addiction there are people who steal things they should not steal biro paper because of that you go to the police station it's not worth it so it's a spirit come once the space is full just stand where you are in fact you can stand there for now you can you can imagine this if this is all that we do today it was worth it great is your mercy towards me your loving kindness towards me your tender I see day after day Let me teach you a principle. Look up. Everything God gave man, God gave man control over. The moment you cannot control it again, a spirit has hijacked it. Are we together now? Now, we're asking these our precious people to come and stand. We're not, listen, I don't want you to feel ashamed for whatever reason. No, you are standing before Jesus. This is the house of God. Addiction has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. Some of the people standing here are some of the nicest people you can imagine. I have prayed for people who will steal anything. Even when you are holding hands praying, they will still carry something. It's a spirit. There are responsible people who are held bound. Some of these addictions you see have been transferred. And, and, and let me tell you this. God must raise people with this anointing and send them to the police force, the correctional centers, because there are people, no matter how long they stay there, what will really set them free is the power of God. So I celebrate all of you for summoning the courage to come. That's what Jabez did. He had to open up himself and say, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, you've been stealing, you've been stealing, you've been this and that. This is a lady that I'm seeing. There is nothing you cannot steal. And you know, I've told you, this thing works like word of knowledge. You can hide your money under the carpet. They will stand and look, look, and just go under the carpet and pick it. Parents, hear me. Some of this supposed stubbornness of children, is not like, it's a, it's a demon. Do you know that there are spirits that make children stubborn? The moment you say go left, that spirit will not let them rest till they go right. I want to pray for you. This is my work. Oh. That demon, that satanic devil must leave you now. Our time is gone, but I'm going to pray for you. Father, these ones have come before you, the God of mercy and the God of all grace. Many of them have been tied down by all kinds of things. But the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. All kinds of addictions right now. Satan, I speak to every spirit that has been assigned to hold you down. Some of them are spirits of inheritance. Some of them all kinds of diabolic things. At the count of three, I declare you must let them go now. Now at the count of three, I'm going to release the power of God on you and that devil will live and live forever. Satan, take your hands of God's people at the count of three. One, two, three, out of their lives now. Be free, be free, be free, be free. I break the power of addiction. 
I break the power of addiction. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of their lives now. Make sure you are praying for them, those who are in the congregation. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Listen, many of you will come and stand here and testify. And you will say, finally, God has given you freedom once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, lay your hands, everyone who is trusting God for a healing miracle. Very quickly, I want you to lay your hands. Lay your hands there. And let's, let's clear the way for those who are returning back so that they return back very quickly. You are more than what people say. You are more than what people say. You are bigger than what people say. You are bigger than what people say. Jehovah, you are good. You are kind. You are more than what people say. Jehovah, you are good. Lay your hands and believe Jesus for a miracle right now. Please don't go back the way you came. Place your hand there. I want to pray for you. You've heard the testimonies of people by the power of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of satanic things. I'm about to pray for you right now. I'm seeing a lady who is coughing out something in a vision. I mean, just like somebody just coughing. I don't know what that is, but in the name of Jesus, already I pray for that person, that satanic planting in your body. Right now, I declare that it comes out now. Please lay your hands. I want to pray for you. You are good. You are kind. You are more than what people say. Father, you have granted us the grace to see the sick healed. Some of you are lifting up the pictures, lifting up your phones. I see people who are connecting. There are many, many, many hospitals. Did you know it's so humbling to know the amount of clinics, hospitals that connect to the miracle services and the tremendous testimonies that have come out. And for those of you who are connecting right now in any hospital, you are connecting for a patient, probably a patient that is already dying, cancer, any demonic thing. Some of you are standing in for your loved ones. You may not have the time to take testimonies tonight, but in the name of Jesus, I want you to believe. He gave us this anointing and it's to be an extension of his healing power to the nations. As I pray, I want you to believe by faith and shout a loud believing amen as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing a breast lump. Right now, the power of God is touching a lady. I'm seeing a healing. Help her please. The Lord is healing a breast lump. That devil is living right now in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is healing an eye condition I'm seeing the power of God touch someone your eyes be healed now I'm seeing someone you are not able you are not able to go to the toilet easily I don't know what medical condition that is. This has affected you right now. You even need to go and see a doctor. This is not just pile. It's, it's like you're not able to stool properly and it's a very demonic situation. Whether you are here or following online, let the healing power of Jesus touch you right now. There's someone, you have what we call nose bleeding. You can stand in the sun and blood just begins to come out of your nose in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but the power of god is touching you now hallelujah hallelujah 
I'm seeing someone with a very, you are a man. You go to ease yourself and you're easing out blood. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the mercy of God, may the power of God touch you now. Every eye condition be healed now. Every deaf ear in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are open this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone suffering from any bone condition, I decree and declare by the power of the Lord Jesus, let your limbs find strength now. Let your limbs find strength now. There's someone you slept on this side, the left side of your, your shoulder, and you've been having excruciating pain. The power of God is touching you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me two people, your molars. If I don't pray for you, they will have to extract it because I'm seeing holes already and it's bringing you severe pain around your mouth. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be a miracle for you now. Ah, I need to pray for someone. I'm seeing a family mourning and I'm seeing someone just passing to glory and this is as a result of cancer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, because you have revealed this by your mercy and by your grace, avert death over this family. Avert death over this family. Let me pray for everyone here and those connecting online that has any trace of cancer. By this unction in the name of Jesus, let cancer die. Let cancer die. Let cancer die. Let cancer die. The Lord is showing me someone, you have a condition. I think I need to go and read this medical book so that I know the name of these things. You have a condition where your blood cells are fighting themselves. This is what I'm seeing. Fighting themselves like a condition where your body fights itself. Not like there's necessarily an external some it fights itself i don't know who that person is but in the name of jesus that tragedy comes to an end now there's someone you are not overweight yet you lose energy the, you can't climb the stair and just the moment you do any work that seems to exhaust you a bit you start breathing there's something wrong with your heart you are not even aware because from what I'm seeing, oxygen is not pumping to your body very well. And this is deteriorating. It's like you have a weak heart. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is. May my God give you a brand new heart now. Every kidney condition be healed now. Every liver problem be healed now. Digestive problems be healed now. And hear me, anyone under the sound of my voice who has not been able to carry their baby in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care what is wrong with your body, let it be cleansed and perfected now. Cleansed and perfected now. Cleansed and perfected now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone, something happened to your voice. Right now you speak, you just have to hush. You can't speak very loud and clear. And you know, it looks like you have to hush. That's the only way to speak. I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, let the healing power of Jesus touch you now. In the name of Jesus. There is a lady God is showing me. Um... You have a medical condition that will not allow you give birth. And the doctor has discussed it with you. There is a name he has given you. The Lord is saying I should pray for you and release you from this. In the name of Jesus, whoever that person is, be released now. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone is beginning to have a swollen foot. You do not even know. 
but your legs are beginning to swell. I'm not a doctor, but I'm hearing in my spirit that this is a problem with your liver. I have to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be healed now. Amen. Be healed now. Amen. Now, whether I mention your case or not, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed now. Amen. In fact, God is, God is healing a woman. I'm seeing a woman with excruciating pain around her back here. In Jesus' name, the power of God is touching you now. The power of God is touching you now. Now, there's someone, you are not on this ground, but I need to pray for you. Someone went to give you an injection, and I don't know if, it, maybe it's like they made a mistake. This is two weeks now. You have been limping. You have been limping. If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing that that condition is going to remain like that because something has been touched that should not have been touched. But by the mercies of God, I decree and declare the God who is the creator of the ends of the earth, may he bring perfection to your body. In the name of Jesus, Koinonia be healed. Those following online be healed. All the overflows be healed. All the hospitals following be healed in the name of Jesus neck problems be healed blood problems be healed organ problems be healed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus